Great, great. So the question is, what about vitamin D, calcium? No one's looked at that in IBD. I think it would be very important to look at. I think it's becoming increasingly important in sporadic colon cancer and one of the, you know, important chemopreventive agents for sure. Um, you know, it, it would be tough, I think, in a retrospective way. A lot of people take multivitamins and be hard to control for. Uh, and no, if you go back and you do these retrospective studies, nobody writes down in their notes whether the person's on vitamin D or, or calcium. So I think it would be hard to do. But I think in a prospective way, uh, it would be very important. Uh, the microbiome is fascinating. I mean, you know, I think that no one's looking at it yet in this setting, but um, people are clearly looking at the microbiome in terms of causing colitis in the first place. And, you know, if it might be intriguing, if there is a different progression, left side versus right side, is the ecology, the microflora, different than the left versus the right? I think that's a, a very tantalizing uh, hypothesis, but it needs some, some data. Dean? Does anybody see a barrier to the uh, the question is, is there a barren crypt foci in IBD? I don't think anybody calls them a barren crypt foci in IBD, but I, I'm not aware. Henry, maybe you can answer that. I, I, I don't see that in a colectomy specimen where you have the whole thing rolled out. We don't look. <laughs> <laughs> we don't don't look ask those. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think people have really reported that. Henry, do you, yes, go ahead. See, I got, uh, you present a lot of data about progression based on a number of different studies. All of and the study is probably not comparable in terms of protocol sampling. Absolutely. What is the impact of sampling on progression? Well, you know, that's why Peter did the modeling study is because most of the time we're taking 20 biopsies or less. What is interesting yeah, is you're, absol yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, in some of these studies there might have been 10 biopsies done. But what, what we, it's interesting if you think about it, even though we've been doing an, a suboptimal number of biopsies, are we causing any harm? When you think about it, the dysplasia rates seem to be going down. I mean, if, it, 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 if we were really missing a lot of things because we weren't taking enough biopsies, we probably would see it. We would see more breakthrough cancers. We would see more breakthrough high-grade dysplasias. We're not seeing that. Most, most centers that I'm aware of are not seeing these sort of breakthrough cancers. So even though it's, it's nice to say you should be doing 30, 40 biopsies, no one does it. And I think, frankly, it ain't all that harmful. And I think Peter's study was important because it says that the reason you may not find it with so few biopsies is because the field effect is, may not be as large as we thought. You know, you, you'd have to, you, the field has to be larger, the dysplasia field in the colon has to be larger to be able to pick it up with some random biopsies. Maybe some of these progression data uh, had more biopsies been taken, it would not have been progression, but it would have been incident can't incident. Yeah, correct. You're absolutely right. And uh, everybody does things uh, differently, but, <coughs> you know, the, yeah, I mean, I, I think this, this is the failing of, of, you know, that's why I put in that Winston Churchill, you know, it's, it's not the greatest data, but it's the best that we have. Yes? <coughs> these, uh, many of these progression studies, uh, they, they plot the data based on some kind of diagnosis. I just wanted to get at the issue about the total duration of disease. Yeah, I think maybe the question you're getting at is, um, can you start the clock from the age of onset of colitis, right? Because y you're just finding, if I'm interpreting this right, you're finding dysplasia at a certain point in time, but how do you know, you know, there wasn't dysplasia before that or, um, and that's been the, the age of onset of colitis, so you have the duration of disease, you know, <coughs> in, in, in that sense. Some studies say that younger age is a higher risk of getting colitis, uh, getting cancer. The problem with that is um, the younger you are, usually the more years of colitis you've had to get your cancers. So if you separate out uh, disease duration from age of onset, usually that drops out. So uh, we don't believe that age of onset by itself <coughs> is a risk factor. Um, it's the duration of colitis with all of the failings of understanding what that really is. Do you, s you know, when did colitis begin? Uh, somebody who has three years of intermittent diarrhea, maybe even with blood, but didn't get a colonoscopy, do you time it from their first colonoscopy or do you time it from the very first bloody stool? Um, and studies have done things differently, so we don't really know. I mean, disease duration is a little bit of a moving target. Thank you.